this is a special conversation. Russell Pierce, uh, I'm your host, Backup Hangman, better known to many of you guys as Ibu Russell Pierce. Uh, and I'm here with a special guest. We're going to have a little conversation with MJF, uh, the AEW World Champion, ahead of AEW Wrestle Dream. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to do this thing. Really, we've been wanting to, ma- uh, to talk to Max for a while now. Um, busy schedule, you know, he's a world champion, has a lot to do, but we finally were able to get this done. And so I'm happy to have him. Max, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what's going on. It's fucking midnight. I don't know what the fuck job you have outside of this shit <laughs> where you have to stay at work until fucking midnight. <laughs> but here I am because uh, yes. I'm salt of the earth. Right. I'm the best fucking AEW world champion of all time. I am willing to yes. be on your schedule since you're so important, Ibu. You're right. so important. So right. I am willing to take on any and all questions. Fire away. Let's mm-hmm. make it quick because we are way past Piper's bedtime. Absolutely. She's fucking pissed. Piper's your cat, correct? What kind of fucking question is that? that I'm not is, a mark. I'm I not watching that interviews. Offensive. You know, I'm not no, watching I'm your not interviews. a mark. Knows it's a cat. Yes. Piper's <laughs> my cat. Yes. Yeah, you know, Russell Pierce conversation. So, yeah, to pull back the curtain, it's late as fuck. You guys are not going to see this at midnight. This will be a, a taped interview premiering probably on a Saturday. No, no, no. You'll have the pleasure of yes. having had eight hours of fucking sleep when you listen <laughs> to this interview. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, listen, MGF's the world champion. And, look, behind the scenes, he said, ask me whatever the fuck you want to ask me. because Don't care. Just go. Let's right, go. right. Um, Max, Wrestle Dream is this Sunday. You are not defending the AEW championship on this show, but you will be defending the ROH Tag Championships. Um, your partner, Adam Cole, who you uh, got really close with, yeah. is hurt. He's, yeah. uh, he, he fucked his ankle up, man. I saw that live. I was in um, I was in Arthur Ashe for that. Really, Can we just close. pause real quick before we get into uh, my fucking brochacho for life, breaking right. his fucking foot in three places? Yes. You were there live. Dude, can we talk about how fucking over I am right now for a couple seconds? Just really quick. Just I'll do it. I'll do it because it's. Experience. I'll do it because it's. It's true. It's. It's a shoot. I, I was there, and uh, what really stood out to me, Max, was um, you're in there and you're just you know Joe is kicking your ass right, and these people just really care, you know, and uh, just I don't know if he's kicking my ass, but I'll, I'll keep. I'll listen. I'll listen to you. Keep At the beginning, me. he was, you know, and I, don't, the, I dude, I was rope a dope in that fool, dude. I was fine the whole time. Was it, was, it was. It, it was in match strategy. Is that what that was? Dude, of course. Of course. I was just tiring him out with my face and my neck. Right, right. You know yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I'm watching this thing, and the crowd is just so into you. Everything you do, you, you got a fucking kangaroo kick over, you know? Like, when you started that, I'm like, that's stupid, you know? A fucking kangaroo kick. And 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 look at you. You, you do the little the, the, the backflip and the positioning, and then the fans go crazy, and you do the drop kick. It was electric. I can't even lie. It was electric. I thought the match was tremendous. And that's um, the thing, Ibu. Unfortunately, a lot of people they sit at home with their TVs, and you can tell that the, there's electricity going on. You mm-hmm. know that MJF is the hottest thing right now in professional wrestling, but there's nothing really like being there live. What? Absolutely. It's why it's why you should buy tickets to a live AEW experience because of there's very few things in wrestling like it. Um, and you yourself did a lot of PR in New York that week. Oh God, to kill tickets, me! Yeah, to get some tickets yeah. sold for the thing. Uh, yeah. How? T- t- tell me about that. Never again. Um, listen, I pretty much single-handedly sold thousands of more tickets by doing, I think, every morning show that exists in New York. Um, could, you, could you even name half of them? Off the top no, of your head? Right. no, not right. off the top of my head. What I will yeah. say is all of them were lovely. All the female news anchors wanted a piece. Duh. Were they hot? Um, you know, I kept it in my pants, though, because I'm a professional, Ibu. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I sold many a tickets. Me and Samoa Joe. uh by, business. By, we, you know, he, he lost, but he lost graciously. He shook my hand. And to me, that matchup was all genuinely about respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, I was born with a chip on my shoulder the size of the Empire State Building. And when people don't show me proper respect, I take it personally. I held on to that grudge for eight years. Right. And the fact that I got to slay who, in my opinion, is there's three kings when you look at the history of Ring of Honor. It's CM Punk. It's Brian Danielson. It's Samoa Joe. Right. And the fact that was the third crown. 
He shook my hand. I have respect for Samoa Joe now. Samoa Joe has respect for me. But what sucks is throughout the process, if I'm being honest with myself, and it definitely didn't feel good when Jay White had to bring it up again, toe fool suck and prick, is it is my fault right. that my best friend Adam Cole broke his freaking foot in three different places because he had to walk, go out there and save my ass in the main event. The main event, mind you, that pulled in 1,040,000 thousand viewers uh during the matchup nbd but yes my friend got hurt in the process and now in my mind i've just defended my world title i have every right not to be on the seattle pay-per-view mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is is i know how much these roh titles mean to my friend mm -hmm. and i know that eventually he will come back because this dude's a freaking warrior and he's one of the best wrestlers in the world today on one leg or not, I want him to be able to come back to us still being the ROH World Tag Team Champions. And that's why I'm doing this match two-on-one -on -one against these really, really weird devil's reject dollar store doofy, doofy goofs this Sunday. And I know it's not going to be easy either. I know I'm not fooling anybody. These guys are dangerous. They're intelligent. They're definitely weird. But mm -hmm. dangerous, nonetheless. Yeah, they so got a catchy thing. Max, yeah, yeah, so, you know, since you brought the Righteous, it, it brings up a good question for me. So um, they have never been on AEW pay-per-view ever, right? Yeah. They are an ROH tag team. They're on yep. this show because you are in the ROH tag division as a champion. Yeah. Um, but, you know, unproven on AEW pay-per-view. And um, there was some questioning of this matchup by, by a couple pundits when it was when it was set up. I, I want to ask you, right? Let's yes. say, Max, I'm a guy with $50 in my pocket, right? Yes, sir. I love professional wrestling, but I also love, you know, taking women out to movies and buying food or whatever, right? Of course. Why should I, why should I part $50 of my money to watch you fight the righteous? Why is the righteous the right pick for this pay-per-view? Why should I care about this? So to answer that question, if we're taking yes. me out of the equation, which we should sure. because I'm the biggest star in the company and okay. the biggest draw at the moment, Fair. Let, let's, let's pretend I'm not in the match, which I am. You are looking at a situation that is two-on-one. -on there is a likelihood of a title change, which drastically changes the landscape of our company because I made a promise to my friend. And if people know me, and people know me pretty damn well because I pretty much put my life out there entirely, um, I, I wouldn't take that very well. And <laughs> I think... I think it would be very interesting to see. Do I think it's going to happen? No. I, I think I'm going to win this match. I think mm. it's going to be very hard. But I think it's going to be very interesting to watch me overcome those odds. Now, if you look at the rest of the card, you let's, let's live in a world where there's only two matches. And the other match is Brian Danielson versus fucking Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, yeah, take my money. Uh, I'm good. I don't need to see anything else. But right. wait, there's fucking more. There's Christian Cage, who I think is a schmuck. However, in my opinion, this is the best he has been in his entire career. And when I say that, it's not hyperbolic. And when I say that and you're listening to this, you know I'm right, which is insane. Let's think about how long Christian has been in the professional wrestling world. This is his best work. And he's about to go in there with Darby Allen. Now, have I beaten Darby with a side headlock takeover twice? Absolutely. But I'm the best wrestler in the world. So that's not a fair comparison. Darby Allen is hands down one of the most enigmatic, one of the most insane professional wrestlers in the history of the sport. And those two guys are going to go at it for that TNT belt. That's another thing you got to be fucking interested in. You got FTR. Possibly, questionably, the best tag team. I know it goes back and forth, whether it's them, whether it's the Young Bucks, whether it was better than you, Bebe. Mm -hmm. And you got the tag team of Ozzy Open, which I know from experience, those guys are freaking really talented. And these are just some of the matches. Like, you know, it, it's funny, right? I remember when Dark Order became number one contenders to our tag belt, and there was Scuttlebutt online. What is this? I don't get it. Da-da-da-da. And then people bought the pay-per-view, 
And then people heard the reaction during the match. Did, so the, crowd, did the crowd sound quiet, Ibu? No, it was red hot for, for the brochacho Now, stuff. do you think the crowd's going to be quiet when MJF is in the fucking ring wrestling well, a match two-on-one? Well, no, because you're in, a, you're in a place right now where you're super over, yeah. and uh, the fans will eat up anything you do. And that brings me to another question, Max. So yeah, you're, sure. you're, you're white hot as a, as, as a, as a baby face, as, as, yeah. the, as the kids say, right? So my question to you is this. You, you came back last year in Chicago for All Out, and you got a similar reaction. And, and in those weeks after that All Out pay-per-view in 2022, you were getting great baby face reactions, but you just were not at a place where you were willing and ready to embrace the fans at the time, but you I are now there mentally, and I can explain why. I was going to say, tell me, tell me why? Why now? Why is now the time for MJF to be this way and not last year? This is not me like messing around. I just wasn't ready to accept love, and I know that that might sound insane to anybody. But if there, if there's anybody that's similar or like minded to me that's listening to this, they're going to totally relate to what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. I had been fucked over so many times in my life, and. Because of my rejection sensitive disorder, you know, I'm already, I already have my arms up at all times. I, I always, when I leave a room, I think everyone's talking shit about me. I'm always constantly, constantly, constantly in my own head. And I knew if I completely let myself out there and I wasn't accepted, it would have killed me. I just, I wasn't there yet mentally. But honestly, my friendship inside of the ring and outside of the ring with, with Cole. And this is not me, oh, wrestling. Like, no, this is like real life shit. Yeah. I really learned a lot as far as just being more open. And look, I still have my bad days, right? The entire arena was chanting tofu at Jay White. And I heard literally one guy say, come on, Jay, you got this. And immediately I was like, fuck, does everyone hate me? Which is insane. That is insane. But that's just how my brain works. And I'm mm-hmm. trying to be better. I'm trying to get better. And Adam had a lot to do with that big time as far as me allowing myself to, to let the fans be a part of this journey with me as opposed mm-hmm. to me trying to buck that. It really has been a, a, a saga, an overarching thing with you because uh, I, I look at the career of MJF and AEW, right? And uh, over the course of time, we've learned more about Max Friedman on TV. You're, you're, you've been very open with uh, just kind of giving people pieces of you and your background. And it seems like a lot of what you've been doing on television is tinged with just real life history. You know, a lot of your 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 chosen opponents and things like that are guys that, you know, have meant something to your life one way, one way, shape or, or that's because or like, honestly, bro, wrestling is my life. Like, right. I'm, and I think that's why people connect with me, mm-hmm. because it is all real. The reason it feels real and authentic is because everything I'm saying is real and authentic. Everything that I'm saying has happened to me or I'm living it right now. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think that's why people want to be on the ride with me. And yes, I am flawed. I am the furthest thing from a perfect human being. Um, but I think people respect that too, because I'm, I'm just, I'm real. Right. I'm real. You so, know? So, so Max, you know, I, I, I totally hear you. I, so here's my thing. Um, I think that the first time you really started to get those layers and you started to peel back the onions of uh, uh, the, the layers, so to speak, of, of, of MJF was uh, in, in a program with one of the big ROH uh, legends that you that you slayed in the past. One of them was CM Punk. And in yeah. that in that time that you were working with him, right, we started to really hear about the background, about how he what he meant to your career and all that stuff. And I thought the business you guys did, you guys did last year was like absolutely phenomenal. I'll yeah. just stop you there. It, it, yes. To me, it wasn't business. It was life. And I know it was life to fill, too. Mm-hmm. It, and I think that's why that rivalry is going to go down as one of the best of all time. Mm-hmm. And that I'm proud of. Am I proud of some of the shit that I did during that time period? I don't know. I kind of got put to the edge, so I'm not I'm not going to fucking sit here and tell you that I didn't mean anything I did, because I did. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I've grown a lot since then, both as a professional wrestler and as a person. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I think when I'm an old man and, you know, God fucking willing... I find a woman to put up with my bullshit that will let me impregnate them. Right. And I'm sitting there with, with my kids. I can be like, hey, check out this dog collar match. Check yeah. out this moment here. Because I feel like it's, it's a rivalry that will stand the test of time. 
Amongst I totally agree. Other, amongst other things that, I, frankly, I feel like I've had a couple of those, and I've only been on national TV for four years, and that's mm-hmm. something I take a lot of pride in. I feel a lot of guys take pride in their matches. Me, personally, all I really care about is if I win or lose. What I'm really more concerned with is is the person watching at home feeling like they're getting their money's worth and their time worth watching me on their TV because right. time is precious. We're all dying slowly. That's just a fucking fact. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it because it's scary, but it's just the truth. So the fact that somebody's willing to turn their TV on for fucking two hours to watch our programming, I think it would be disrespectful as fuck if I didn't try to give you guys 110% week in and week out. I love to hear that. And I, you know, you would hope that like this is the mentality of everybody who suits up there to go out there for an AEW program. Uh, you, you, you talk about how this wasn't it wasn't business. It was just your life. Right. Um, I, I, I totally hear you. I, you could kind of see it in, in uh, you know, on the on screen stuff. But um, the thing about Punk is he came back this year when AEW Collision uh, was launched. Right. And after a few weeks, he pulled out a championship out of a red bag that he yes. uh Never officially lost. He was stripped of it. He yeah. called himself the real world champion. And mm. he was saying this at a time where you were the, uh, you know, incumbent AEW champion. Uh, my question to you is, what were your, because we never got to hear you respond to any of this on television. I never or, commented on it. I never yes. commented on it. I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay. I, <laughs> I'm not exactly a company man. I almost got our company thrown off of Turner after I called Tony a fucking mark. Mm-hmm. Um, so I won't sit here and tell you I'm a company man, but I'm definitely pro professional wrestlers. Yes. And the fact of the matter is collision is really important and collision success is super important. So at the time, having a guy of that stature, having something that everybody in that show could be fighting for, because realistically, as much as Tony Khan wishes he can clone MJF, I can't be everywhere at once. Right. So I didn't have an issue with it. I thought it made all the sense in the world. Um, yeah. So to me, it, it really, I wasn't sweating it, frankly. I hear you on that. Uh, in the back of your mind at that time, was there any, was there any part of you saying like, I, I, I might have to run into this guy just to figure this thing out, to settle this thing? Well, God, I think that way about everybody on the roster. I, I watch wrestling religion. I think about that with people that aren't even on my show like mm-hmm. I, I you know me dude i got yes. eyes on the back of my head uh, as my people have to or else we'll all get murdered again so right. i'm constantly i'm constantly watching everybody so my answer to that is emphatically yes but also okay. i'm watching roosh i'm watching jay white who when his music hit there was a part of me that wasn't all that shocked there was a part of me that did see it coming because mm-hmm. this dude's been building momentum ever since he came into the company He's mm-hmm. an incredible professional wrestler, but he's just not on the level of the devil, nor is anybody, so you can't fault him, really. You know, I'm yeah. worried that Brian Danielson, who's saying he wants to retire soon, is probably going to want one more shot against me because I think it's fair to say he came the closest to dethroning me besides Joe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, dude, there's a lot of people that I have to watch and keep Absolutely. On. Yeah, I, I I totally see that. You, you're, having a, you're having a real big year, Max. I... Um... I personally, and this is just my subjective take, uh, Ibu Russell Pierce, I, I think that you are the wrestler of the year. And my reasoning was that, you know, the combination of what you've been able to do to kind of help the company metrically, plus, you know, the in-ring, the, sorry, the uh, in-arena reactions, the in-ring work, which even though you're not even like a star ratings guy, for example, I thought, I think a lot of your big matches, pretty much all your big matches this year have been, have been highly successful. And uh, for me, just great. Absolutely. So, I would um, actually, you know, I would love to speak on this, like, Sure, talk about it. I, I feel it's very obvious that I'm the best professional wrestler in the world, but everybody's metrics are different, right? Okay. My metrics are who's getting the loudest reaction and who's drawing the most money and, and who's making the biggest impact for mm. their entire company, right? Okay. The answer is simple then. Now, if you don't want to look at it that way and you want to be like, oh, fuck, who does the most cool moves? Yeah, dude, I'm not your fucking guy. Like, I do, I do fucking headlock takeovers and clotheslines, and fucking kangaroo kicks. But when I do it, it gets as loud as a reaction as when fucking Will Ospreay does a fucking triple indie, whatever the fuck, right? Okay. It's just, it's just taste at the end of the day. To me, star ratings really don't matter. 
Um, what matters to me is are people emotionally invested in what I'm doing? Do people genuinely care about what I'm doing? When my music hits, does it get a visceral reaction, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's what professional wrestlers need to focus on more. And what I think is cool is when I came into pro wrestling, everyone around me on the independent circuit was like, oh, shit, man, I got to... I got to like think of something to make myself stand out. And the way that they would try to do it is by doing a maneuver in their match when they were trying to, they weren't necessarily trying to win. They were just trying to impress people by some athletic feat. Mm -hmm. And that's not what made in my mind, this sport great. What made this sport great was, was two mega stars colliding inside the squared circle that you as a viewer genuinely have a visceral reaction and caring for and you want to see them succeed or you want to see them fail and i watch that go away from a sport that i love more than anything mm -hmm. and i'm just glad that i'm a guy that's brought it back and you know what if that doesn't win me rest of the year ever i'm fucking fine with that mm -hmm. <laughs> entirely fine with that my to me my biggest goal at the moment I want to go down as the greatest AEW world champion of all time. That is okay. my goal. And I feel, um, you know, I'm getting close to breaking Kenny's record. Um, I'm also getting close to breaking the record to most title defenses during a reign. Um, I feel that I've put on the most captivating TV. And I'm, tr and I'm just going to keep on chugging. And my goal is once... Some lucky son of a bitch does take this title off me that everybody universally and unequivocally goes, yeah, no, man, that MJF world title reign was it. That is the pinnacle. That is what every single world champion AEW should, uh, should try to attain. That is my goal at the moment, more than anything. Well said. Look, and so as we, as we kind of close out here, I, I want to ask you this, Max. Yeah. Um, you talk about your mentality for – you know when you your in ring approach, right? And mm. like just the big fight and 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 making people care, the mega stars, all that type of stuff, right? And uh, I I think that your approach is very similar, to be honest, to another uh, industry juggernaut right now, and that's Roman Reigns. And um, sure, I Roman's think, incredible, right? And I think about this because you know you talk about how you've captivated people with the television you're producing with Adam Cole, and I think it's undeniable, regardless of what anybody says. Um, the people in these arenas are so into you guys, right? As and, are and as are the numbers metrically. Okay. So it's it's you know, here here's the deal. What cool is with with my shit is even the snarkiest of smarks is putting my shit over, but it doesn't matter, right? The only thing that really matters is because this is not just a sport; it's a business. Mm -hmm. What's what's making my company money? It's it's me <laughs> when I'm on screen. <laughs> that's why I'm on. That's why I'm on screen every week. A lot, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the yeah, ring, no for twenty minutes. With yes, the stick, yes. You know? And 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 Tony's fucking beyond happy. And I'm sure if it were, <laughs> if if I was up for it, I'm sure he would want me to be on the whole fucking show. But I'm not. Okay, right. I'm 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 only human. I'm tired. Right, um, right. <laughs> Max, so, what do you what do you say to people that that think that the Bochacho saga is an emulation of the Bloodline saga? Oh man, I don't think it's similar at all. I think Why? what happened. I'll tell you what it is. Why? Okay. A again, this goes back to an issue that was inside of my sport. It 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 was a while until we had something that made us feel something, and the Bloodline made us feel something, right? Before Bloodline, it was just like, yeah, you know, I'm tuning in to WWE. There's, like, shit going on, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. it was just very Stuff. scattered. It was just scattered. It's the only way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And and then Bloodline came along, and it made you feel. And now here's MJF and Adam Cole, and, oh, my God, I'm, I'm feeling something right now. This is, like, I intensely care about this. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of the feeling I have when I watch Bloodline Oh, maybe it's maybe it's the same thing, right? Like, which is insane, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like if I watch a Saw movie and I love it, and then the next day I sit down and I watch fucking Goodwill Hunting, those movies both get me excited. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean this. It doesn't mean that they're doing the same thing. It's so, so, so basically, different. in your words, the reason why people feel that these things might be similar is because 
in construction, they're they're big wrestling storylines that make you care emotionally. Yes, and it's it's the bingo, and it's the same reason why certain wrestlers get compared to other wrestlers, and the comparisons are flawed. And I see it all the time. Just mm -hmm. like, okay, this is a great example, and this is not a shot at EC3 at all. Okay. At, at all. Oh my or, god, when he thought you were EC3. <laughs> when but but it's true. When yeah. I first came onto the scene, the first week <laughs> of AEW Dynamite, I went out there, I cut a great promo, had a match with Brandon Cutler, and then you know, I I my my friends hit me up, they go, yo, people are calling you like EC3 Jr. and Albert and Alberto Del Rio Jr. And I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, that's insane. <laughs> like I'm not, Alberto Del Rio because like Cause I'm like in shape and I can talk and oh, okay and I yeah I mean I wear a scarf like I, there, I there is there is a growing subgenre of like talky talk white guys you know in wrestling that like you know what I mean like I feel like we are starting to create like a Miz factory you know it, it's it's just odd but I feel like the fans are creating it in their own fucking head cannon you know okay. what I mean like you know who I feel bad for Ooh. I feel bad for Grayson Waller because <laughs> I get fucking tagged. <laughs> Yo, Grayson Wall is just trying to be MJF. Like fucking hell he is. <laughs> it's, it's, do you see me wrestling in fucking basketball shorts? Am I, do I have a fucking accent? Do I, am I six foot two? Like, no. Like, this he, is like he, he's just a promo first guy, and so it's like, oh, he's MJF. You know? Exactly. And and again, and it's not the fans' fault, right? Again. There's a wrestler that makes you feel something throughout the avenue of talking, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Who else makes me feel something throughout the avenue of talking? MJF. Oh, dude, he's copying MJF. No, he's not, you fucking idiot. Like, we're just both good at talking. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, so it's, 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 wrestling it's fans amazing. are definitely funny, but at the same time, who am I kidding? I'm the biggest wrestling fan of them all. I'm right. the one who's willing to get dumped on my head just to leave a, a legacy for a sport that I care deeply about. Frankly, you are clearly a wrestling fan. I watch your work and I, I see pieces of lots of different things. I see homages to different things. Um, you say you're not, you know, what you're doing isn't necessarily bloodline. It's just that people care. What yeah. are what what right now when you go out to the ring, right? When you do what you do and you approach a big match, what is, I guess, motivating or not motivating? What, what's influencing your work right now? Dude, that is such a loaded question. It's unfair because I watch everything. Right. Um, except New Japan. New Japan sucks. Right. But outside of that, I watch everything. Um, I feel like I try to take the best of each era of professional wrestling, mm -hmm. the, the things that I am the most passionate about, and I mix it into a little gumbo pot. And, mm -hmm. and that's just always the way I've approached this sport. I hear you. Max, you have always been a talker, right? 2019, you came in. You were the guy talking shit and making people mad. Yeah. Now you're an all-around player, big baby face, you know, top champion. In your own words, what's the difference between Maxwell Jacob Friedman 2019 and Maxwell Jacob Friedman 2023? Maxwell Jacob 2019 was a scumbag. Maxwell Jacob 2023 is your scumbag. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Right. I'm pretty good at this. Thank yeah, you. you know, yeah, you know, you, you can do it a little bit. All right, and then I guess my last thing mm. is... You are the AEW champion. You, you, whether you whether you see yourself as this or not, uh, it's it's your you know it's your team. You have the ball right now. You're the captain, right? Yeah. Um, what's the next step for your promotion going into 2024? Like you guys, have, you guys are the big alternative. You guys have done Wembley. You guys have done Grand Slam. Tony Khan is saying that this weekend is the start of a new era for the company. And mm -hmm. that can mean so many different things. There's rumors of Mercedes Monet potentially debuting. There's rumors of Edge potentially coming into All Elite Wrestling. Yeah. Um, there's, there's talk of monthly pay-per-views, a streaming deal, Max, all this type of stuff. Um, very exciting times, I think. Uh, and, 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 and things are going well with the ratings. Um, what's, what's the next step in your mind for the company to take overall? I honestly, well, selfishly, it's coming to terms of a deal with me. Um, okay. is my first answer. My my second answer. So you haven't signed an extension? Not yeah. yet. Not okay. Yet. So my... you're, you're telling you're telling you're telling the audience, our Russell Pierce audience, that in 2024 you will still be entering a bidding war potentially. Potentially. Okay. With a, with a capital P. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And my the the second answer I would give to that question 
is Turner loves us right now. Mm-hmm. We are in the top three on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. We are, frankly, the the second hot, hottest property that they that they own. The first hottest hottest is the NBA, which, to be fair, had a bit of a head start on us. <laughs> a couple, um, couple, couple fifty years, yeah, you know, yeah, something years. like that. Yeah. So we're we're sitting pretty, and sometimes I'll read sky is falling stuff online, and it makes me chuckle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll bring something to everyone's attention that nobody wants to talk about, and it's even becoming blatantly obvious for Raw and SmackDown. Um, cable as a whole, cord cutting as a whole, since 2019 is astronomical. It's astronomical. Now, the way this this business and industry is set up, especially with streaming now, things are changing. Now, pro wrestling is one of the hottest products that a cable provider can, or like a big cable network can own because live sports is king. Mm -hmm. In, In a streaming world, for cable, live sports is king. And that's what we are. Like, so... 890,000 people in 2023, frankly, is the equivalent to a million people in 20 fucking 19. And, and that's just the fucking fact that people don't want to talk about because people get weird about the cord cutting thing. If you actually do the math and you look up how many houses and households have just mm-hmm. stopped, like, be honest, Ibu, do you have a cable box? I haven't used cable since 2017. There you go, dude. And I would imagine that a lot of the people that are listening to this haven't either but genuinely we're giving people a reason to buy a fucking cable box that's Mm -hmm. that is that is the undeniable truth about both wwe and aew um i think that they're gonna fucking give us a really good deal and Mm -hmm. i think that that's the next step for aew because once they give us that good deal then you can play you can pay excuse me big money players like me what we're worth and and that's huge because right. right now, undoubtedly, and I think oh, I think everyone would admit this, I feel we have the strongest bell-to-bell roster probably in the history of the sport. And I don't feel that's hyperbole at all. Me, Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, fucking piece of shit, but Roderick Strong, <laughs> Darby Allen, Chris Jericho, Claudio Castagnoli, Eddie Kingston, fucking Brody King, like Roosh. Now I'll just keep Ricky Starks, Will Hobbs, Samoa Joe, Miro, Malachi Black. It's an embarrassment of riches, bro. I yeah. can sit here and go on and on until my face fucking turns. So much, so much so that like not even everybody can get like a push, you know. <laughs> like well, well like, hey, baby, daddy's got to take up all that TV time. We got to fucking pop yeah, it up, okay? 20, Twenty minutes pop a quarter, right? Yeah. You know what the deal is, baby. Fucking read the fucking quarter hours, pal. Yeah, but yeah. um, that's my deal. That's 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 what I think the next step is is just us coming to a uh, a term of agreement with uh, Turner. And outside of that, what I also will say is. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think if we do get on Max, that would be massive. Oh, absolutely. Massive. I'm tired of spending $50. I, I, I got to be real with you, man. I, I you know, I, <laughs> I, dude, I, I hear you. Look, a lot of, a lot of my fans are poor and I respect <laughs> that. I really do. Yeah, but you know? if you're not a poor, worthless piece of shit like Ibu, we yeah. have a pay-per-view coming up this right. Sunday, right. October 1st. Mm-hmm. You can watch me successfully defend the ROH tag titles single-handedly against the righteous absolutely you heard the man that was mjf plugging uh wrestle dream in his match against the righteous and so uh for max i'm back up hangman evil russell pierce i want to thank max for doing this interview and this was a special russell pierce conversation we'll catch you guys next time